Good morning everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today is an update on the three Sashiko projects. So let's start with the first one here. Now that's the leftovers of my cotton that once I did the double line, there was a bit left over. So I've kept those and even if there's a bit like that, I've kept it. I've just popped it in my little stash here. So I spent a bit of time stitching. Now you probably can't see all my efforts here because I did decide to do the single thread for the rest of the piece. So if I turn it over, you'll see what I've been doing. So I've got my big double lines, as in double threads. I've done one boundary stitch, as in right around the outside. I'm yet to do that one, that one, and that one. Then, according to our little stitch guide here, the next stitch was these big, long, diagonal lines, these guys. And I did them in single thread. I don't know what happened there. I think that's when my husband walked into the room with some chocolate. And, yeah, that's me going back for my second lot of chocolate. So I don't know what happened there. I think I just turned it somehow on my lap picked up my thread and then away I went looking for that diagonal line. So the diagonal lines through here are done. You, you probably won't be able to pick it up because the print on the fabric is quite bold. So I've um, completed that task. I hope doing that one there and that one there doesn't jigger me up in the future, but it doesn't matter. So Stitch number three, okay, is the opposite diagonal line. Oh, all right. This wasn't with me when I was sitting on the couch, so I was unsure if having done by mistake those two would have um, upset the apple cup, but it's not. So I'm going to be coming back across here. So that makes sense because there's my grid and the cloth is very stable. So, yeah. They were a little trickier to do because we're now on the bias. You know how fabric, if you pull fabric that way and that way, it doesn't really do much. But if you go to the opposite corners, you get that bias. Well, my stitching was on the bias. So I had to be a little bit careful because it was pulling the fabric and then I'm pulling the threads. So I had to get the piece back down on a surface and just make sure everything was, you know, seated properly. So that was just an interesting, you know, take on it. I can already see that this one here isn't as good as it could be because it's got a little bump of thread there. But yeah, so that's my process with this little guy. He is coming along nicely. I did go around the outside edge of all the pieces on my sewing machine just to hold back any fraying that um, may be coming. So the only other comment I would make with this particular project is um, I've noticed that it has hurt my wrist a little. It reminds me of when I was doing a lot of crocheting. Every time I did a pattern that was like maybe four stitches repeat, four stitches repeat, you know, just that banging away at the same design, the wrist didn't move much because it was just four maybe a, a slip knot, four slip knot, four slip knot. Whenever I did um, a decorative granny square where I was constantly going around to build a product that then got attached to other squares, you know, you're constantly doing things with your wrist and you're stopping and you're thinking about your pattern. And I notice with this, because you're holding your needle and you're just doing small movements, just up and down, up and down, feeding that fabric on all the way. Now, normally you would pull your thread out, you'd go back in, you'd probably be wrestling a little with your fabric, you'd pull your thread back out. You know, there's a lot of movement, but this is just so subtle and it's up and down, up and down. And I can feel a tendon here that is quite inflamed after just probably three hours of doing it and I was up and down all evening it was just pick it up do a bit you know but it's that tight little little movement so if you have some hand troubles or 
a little bit of pain in your wrist, it probably isn't for you because I think it would really aggravate a situation. I thought this would be a great little project just to take away for a weekend, but I don't think so. I think it's one of those little projects you do a little bit and then you have to put it down and find something else that you have a lot of movement in your wrist. Anyway, just a thought I'd mention that. That's my findings, so to speak. Now, this little guy, he's coming along. I finished everything that we had spoken about in the center with all the colors. And then I couldn't help myself. I had to have a go at getting rid of the lines to see if I liked it. So I grabbed out my pen, pen water paintbrush. So I don't know if you've seen these before. They're good if you want to activate inks or you want to activate um, a dye in a very small space. You fill them up with water, screw the little top on. You can usually pick them up around the place pretty cheap and then the water seeps through the wick and comes out the end. So I was able to moisten my piece and I really focused on the flower and um, just to see if it dissolved and it did. So pretty happy with that. I did manage to lose a couple little stitches in the process, but doesn't matter. I can, that one there, it may not have even been there anyway. I did a little test on the logo down the bottom, so that was fine. Um, now, I did a bit of research and I found this everywhere. So if you type in Sashiko cloth good news, you will find it somewhere around on the internet or Etsy. So it's not, as I suspected, something that had been around a little while. Now, I have linked one place on the, um, in the description and I checked it just before I made this video and she's only got eight left. So she had a lot more than that when I um, originally popped it in the description. So just Google it, have a look around if you like this style. Now, in her description, I thought it was quite interesting, or it may not have been hers. She, um, it was described as a William Morris inspired, which makes sense. I, I just kept looking at this thinking, this is just so familiar. Colour feels like it would work with it, but that doesn't seem like it's Japanese. I'm getting a little bit off the track. You know, I was sort of beating myself up a little bit about using colour, but I really felt like it it needed it. Yeah, it's a William Morris inspired panel. So it just, the penny just dropped. So I feel quite comfortable in what I've done now. I don't know why I was overthinking it, but anyway. Am I a lover of the pale green here? Hmm, I'm not sure. I just, it's just not bouncing off the page at me. It's just there. It looks better in real life. But I think if that was on a wall, you wouldn't even realise it was there. And it sort of looks like there's a gap there. And I think it's just a colour that is so close to the background. So I'm really not sure what I'm going to do with that yet. At this stage, it's staying. But it might end up coming out and being replaced with something a little bit more punchy. I'm going to carry on and just see if it works or not. So anyway, the next thing I decided to do as I was stitching this is there's a lot of floral embellishments through the whole piece. And then the other thing is animals. So I've decided to make my animals one color. So I've got a couple choices. I could go with the browns. but I think they will blend a little bit too much. Then I decided I'd have a look at black and black just seems too stark. I never really go towards black. I had a little think about charcoal and I thought, well, that might be a little bit elegant. A charcoal thread going through. Now this one is a wonder fill and it's called slate. Now this one, is a DMC pearl cotton, is it? No, it's a wonderful as well. EZ05. And it's like a 
dark chocolatey colour. So I guess we've got to just decide which one is going to make them pop. And I think it's this one. Like, there's not much in it, guys. I'm splitting hairs here. So the plan is to stitch all the animals in this dark tone. I'm going to put that one away because it's not going to happen. And this piece is probably better for you because if you have sore wrists, because this um, doesn't require that feeding of the needle. It's more, um, you know, you can come up and down. You could even put it in a hoop if that is something you prefer. If you prefer to have, you know, the support of the, the hoop. Definitely the way to go. So I'll just do a couple little stitches here. And then I can carry on with that piece at my leisure and get my animals done. That'll be my next. I think once they're done, I'll really be able to see what's left and what colors I use. I end up adding that raspberry red to the piece because the tulip, I was talking in the last video that I'd split those petals into two different colors. I didn't in the end. I sort of felt like that was getting a bit busy you know, maybe I need to come back and just make this here green. You know, maybe that second green is just getting tizzy. Yeah, this will, I think this will be good. You sort of got a bit of a tone in this fabric. So you sort of got to find colors that pop on it or you completely blend. And just sort of have like a shadow stitching on your fabric. So, you know, by doing it in cream, but that'd be a bit of a waste on something like this because you just wouldn't get to enjoy the detail the designers put into it, all the little flowers and things. It was such a shame when I woke up this morning and I could feel pain in my wrist. And I was like, well, what did I do? I actually thought maybe I had jarred it playing with um, Pepper and Bandit, but I don't think so. And when I felt the needle, I made my coffee and I come into the room and I picked up the needle and just did that little wobble. And I could feel it like the tendon is warming up now, like it's the pain has subsided, but we all know it's still there. It's sort of lulls you into a false sense of security. So there is the little deer. That's going to work a treat. I'm happy with that. It'll take a lot of pressure off of trying to get the animals to pop on the fabric with just browns because I'm already pe competing with a warm tone in the fabric itself. So I think it would have been a bit blandy. We sort of need them to, I don't know, it's like when you're looking at a piece of artwork, the artist usually leaves a spot for you to take a breath and roll your eyes over the work and there's just always these little spots where you just take a breather before you look at the next section of art. Well, most art pieces I tend to see that. Okay, let's just do his little nose and I want to move on to the cherry blossom piece. Now I went looking for more fabrics and I haven't found anything that just jumped out at me. 
and I did find the sister to the pink one I found. So I thought, come on, Corinne, just use what you got. Stop getting new stuff. Because it is, it is the right colour and I do like the little image on it. So then I got myself some photos of cherry blossoms sort of to just remind myself what the flower is all about. So I'll show you that. I'll show you what I've got because they tend to be a, a, a cascade of pink, like they're predominantly pink with dark pink centers or nearly red, cherry red. And then there's these little stamens that sort of stick up with little yellow points on them. Like if you were to do a pistol stitch, you'd do the, the stitch, but the end of it would be in yellow because that's where all the pollen sits right at the top of them, like a little bud. So, all right, that's enough. I think you get the general gist. Yeah, that'll, that'll work. I have to undo that green, don't I? It's like an effort that's not acknowledged. Yeah, I'm going to do it, guys. So that'll be my homework for this piece. I'm going to stitch all the animals in the grey and then um, unpick the green and replace it with something. I don't know. We'll see. Alrighty. Let's have a look at this piece. As I said, I've stitched around the outside with my sewing machine, so I feel like she is secure. Let's just get ourselves one little section. I haven't done anything on it yet. I sort of, I don't know, I'm enjoying thinking about it. Does that make sense? So let's have a look at these flowers. What I'm thinking is my fabric. Now, remember I do have a blue in the series. So that might be handy when I get to the little bird. Gee, that doesn't look as nice on the camera as it does in real life. Get a bit of darkness there. It's more of a cherry, deep red. But anyway, there's the sister to this piece. And I've got quite a lot of these creamy fabrics. So I'd be pretty confident I could find something if we felt like that wasn't quite okay. So, what I'm thinking is I'm going to, let's just, where's a pen? Let's just trace, if we can, one of these cherry blossoms. Now I can just see it. This is grease proof paper and I can just see it. Maybe I can do better than that. I've got tracing paper. Is this it? Yeah. I just grabbed that out of the kitchen cupboard as I entered the room, but it's just a little bit, little bit hard to see. And I think this would be better. Yeah. Okay. This is just tracing paper that you buy from art shops. So, what I'm thinking of doing is inserting a piece of fabric now if we use the lines of the design now I will will I yeah I think gee that's bodgy stitching I think we'll stitch them because I think having that shadow of stitching might be rather cute thinking where's the let's cut that out so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it out first as per the lines I've got a bit of a
shape as per the design. And then I might cut it out again, but maybe a quarter of an inch inside. Okay, so there's my, and they would have to be different. Okay, there she is. So, let's decrease it in size. So let's come in, I'm gonna just do it by eye. Let's come in a little bit because that'll just give that pop of blue and then you'd see the stitching is what I'm thinking. And once we get that base down, and I guess I've then got to decide, do we just do it quite freehand and have it you know, all of the threads hanging off the edge of the, I'm concentrating here, threads hanging off the edge of the piece, or do we apply some that okay so I sort of think we'll do it thready and rough because the reason I'm saying that is I feel like I can't see I better turn my phone on silent because all me mates are starting to wake up and it's just yibby yabber all day. <laughs> oh, goodness me. Facebook, gotta love it. All right. We're being brave now. We're diving in. So now I'm just going to cut it out. Um, what was I saying? I think I will leave it all rough and thready because I want to use morsels of the Japanese fabric on it as well. I remember I made a comment that I sort of in my mind see a collage of fabrics layered in amongst all of this sashiko stitching. That's what I'm seeing for this. Okay. Now every flower would have to be different, wouldn't it? Or is that the same size? Okay. I could probably get away with that guy there as well. Now, where do we go? Like so. Beautiful. I love it. Yeah. I love it. How will that guy fit comfortably there? He will maybe a little bit off of this petal. I thought maybe they were all different, but it looks like there is a bit of design repeating, which makes sense. They would have formed this on a computer. So they'd create one flower and then pop it everywhere. So that's good news that we can creep out another flower here. So yeah, I don't think I'm going to use 
um, what do they call it? Iron on, iron on product. I think I want to keep it more organic. Not a fan of it anyway, because it's just hard work to push a needle through. So I think, um, I think I'll just overstitch the ends. I might find a, a pink cotton, as in sewing machine cotton, everyday common cotton, and do a little bit of overstitching. Just might need a little bit off of that petal. It's just finding where it's a little bit close to the edge and then Need that little bit nibbled out of there. Is this I'm using this as my marker? It has distorted the petal underneath a little bit, so it makes it quite obvious that there's something something there. Okay, so we have two cherry blossoms in position. I guess the next decision is how we layer things up to get the effect of a cherry blossom. So let's do this will be interesting. Let's trace these two out. Two different size cherry blossoms here. I guess the other thing is, for like this example, I really think I need a second pink fabric for that guy. So if I can't find another pink fabric that complements, which at the moment I don't own, Another option is we stitch this guy in the, in like a pink. So we're stunning. Yeah. Yeah. We could stitch that fellow in pink thread. So it's like a shadowing, like a, a skeleton version of the flower is probably a good way to describe it. A negative and a positive, a solid and a translucent. You know what I mean. And just have these few really detailed fabric dimensioned little ones popping up as well as some stitched ones. Mm, I like that idea. Instead of them all being... fabric. Try and keep keep it simple looking. Yeah, beautiful. So let's and I think too by doing it this way with just the random some stitch some not this actually gives me the opportunity to add more because I can stitch around like that here for example so if there's anywhere where I'd like to add another flower I can actually do that you know gee I'm getting ahead of myself now let's just focus on one panel 
within the panel. I don't even know where I am on the panel. Is this the bottom or the middle? I just opened it up and thought that'll do. I know you've been asking, what are you going to do with this, Corinne? I have no idea. I do like the fact that it is a big piece, so there's opportunity that it could be made into a throw, something along those lines. Oh, what am I doing? That's not the piece we want. This is the piece we want. So now I've got to find where she fits. Gee, I made that a bit whoopy. What's going on? Why can't I make that piece fit? I think it's meant to go there. Yeah, that's it there. That's better. At the end of the day, it doesn't have to be exact if your petal's a bit whoopy. Does it matter? See, that one's a little bit small. It does matter because it looks a bit odd, doesn't it? I might trim this guy down a little so he's not as big and it might blend that little guy in a bit better. Yeah, that's a bit better. Okay. Okay. Now, the other thing we need to decide is what we're going to do in the centre. Now, I've got a photo on my phone of cherry blossoms. You see how they're like change colours? There's lights and darks and in the pinks. And then there's these really intense little centres with these stamens that come out. So the fact that they've drawn these stamens sort of makes sense a little bit now to me. So... I guess we've got an opportunity that we lay in the centre. See, that's too yellow. I don't like it. It's very, very yellow. I feel like I need a softer. What's in the Japanese fabrics? Come on, girl. Let's, let's sneak back to the world of Japan and see if there's something here. So I've got this in quantity. That's better. See, that's just too lemony. Look. I don't know if you can see it. One's really a cold colour and one's a warm colour. So, And this I know I've got by the metre. So I'm going to grab that scrap. I've also got that scrap. No. That. No. It needs to be bright but not too bright. So let's put them back in there. That's a rejected piece of fabric. So I'm wondering, where's my tracing paper? Can I create a random flower to go within the flower? It needs to be, I think, something with a little bit of shape. On its own accord. No, don't like that. Let's try again. We've had too many petals. That's better. And let's try one for the little guy. It's a smaller. Okay, we 
Let's rough cut this guy out. Actually, I might just pin him straight on the fabric. Let's not do this twice. Let's start thinking with our noggins. Pin's going to be in my way, isn't it? Okay. It doesn't have to be perfect, girl. It's supposed to be fluid and rustic looking too. You want it to look a little bit soft. with that and the other little guy I think I'll just freehand them as I need them See how she looks. Can I always cut another one? There we go. A little guy for there. Lovely. Now, as we get some light happening on our little piece, so there's a bit more movement. I've got one more, don't I? Might as well finish it. Shame I didn't have a couple different tones of pink in this one pink fabric. That would have made it a lot simpler to do a turned over petal or it's never the way. And I'm trying to do it with what I already own, like enough's enough. I've got to get creative and see what I can find in my stash. lost my shape there a little bit okay so I better hang on to those two because I believe that they will pop up again in that size somewhere now now I've got my two little random centers so I guess the next question is the red is it something we stitch in? I don't think we can because the stamens are I think I'm just gonna cut a rough shape. Circle ish and sit that in the center. And then from there I think we can stitch in the stamens to our heart's content with say some pistol stitch so we've got our little red throat we've got a bit of a cream layer there purely just to add a little bit of interest and have the light bounce around a little bit otherwise it probably would have looked a bit flat And then I'll get some cotton and do overcast stitch. Try and keep it as primitive as I can and not get too... There we go. It's like the, the morsels just keep giving, don't they? So that's that, that. We won't need all this excess fabric, so that can go back into my drawers. This will keep out. Now, <clears throat> I'm happy with that. 
I think white will go around the fabric flower. Then these. Now, I do have a few pinks here that are soft. This one here is beautiful, but I don't have much of it. It came from an op shop, so I'd be reluctant. This is gorgeous, and it has a sheen to it. <clears throat> Excuse me. That has possibilities. No, see, it's not going to be enough pink. It's just going to look like white thread. It does tend to break easily. She's an old girl. So I think I'd drive me nuts trying to get that through the fabric. This might be better. Yeah, it is. But it maybe need to be a little bit stronger in colour. Don't think that's much better. Do we go crazy? Maybe we use that in the center. Should get us. Don't know. How subtle do we want to be? I'm sort of tending towards this. I guess it's going to come down to where's my cream? This one's going to be stitched in cream, remember. So you need to be able to distinguish that the piece has changed. Yeah, see what I mean? If if that's, yeah, see that's too similar, I think. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just see how it goes. We haven't got to that stitching side of things yet. So I'm just going to have a think about that. And in the meantime, I can come and overcast stitch all the way through these. So I'll need to find, let me go grab my cotton. This won't be a moment. I'm going to need to find a red and a pink. Won't be a second. <clears throat> okay. Okay. We get to delve into grandma's, let me just turn these, grandma's collection of cottons from when she was making bridal wedding dresses and bridesmaids. And they're all sorted now. They're all, we're in one big container. I need to keep this project together. Hang on a minute. I've got things on my lap, things everywhere. Where's a container for this project? So that's into there, there to be considered, and that's a definite. So, Semco make this fantastic 80 piece. They do a smaller one as well. I think it's 50, where it holds all of your cottons on a little spike. So we need a red, a raspberry red. Not a real good red. And we need a pink. Like, talk about capturing the 80s and the 90s. Look at the colours of all the dresses. Teal was pretty popular, but wait till you see the pinks. Even the 70s, she was stitching in the 70s wedding dresses. So, a few purple brides, maids, a few purples through there. Whoops, sorry. You see all those purples there drifting into the pinks and the coral pinks. Okay, surely we can match something. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I think that, and that looks brand new. There's a couple of them. Oh, that's a bit of a dirty pink. That's brand new. Oops, that's lighter again. Like, look at the, like, seriously, a bridesmaid comes to you and says, my dresses are going to be pink. There's like three different, four different colours there. I think this one, it always pays to go a little bit lighter. I don't even think this one's been opened either. Yeah, that's the pink thread. Done. Now, um, there's a few burgundies in here. They're nearly purple, but they're 
dark. See what I mean? I'm wondering if one of these might be better for the red instead of a fire engine red. Yeah, that's better. Any one of those. This one I'll do. She's an old girl. Let's have a play with her. Okay. So there's my cottons to stitch it down. I think that's enough homework for me to have a bit of a play with. And then I need to have a think too about the shadow cherry blossoms, we'll call them. Whether it becomes dark or light or there might be a better pink I just don't have on my table here. And then, of course, the stems are going to be in this colour. So I've got plenty here I can have a little play with. So I pop it all in my tray. All right, guys, thank you for joining me. I think that's about all I need at this stage in the way of prepping myself to move along a little further. Oh, I know what I wanted to show you. Let's just fold this up, put it away. I did a little order with um, East Meets West. Now, a lot of you have been shopping with those guys because they've got a lovely broad range of Japanese fabrics and uh, needles, threads, stencils, you know, all sorts. So I went back and I picked up some more stencils because I'm a bit of a fan of them. I've used them before on the, um, let me grab it, the little rice bag here. Um, here, here, and there. That's a repeat of this little guy. I loved it so much. I thought, oh, I've just tucked a tiny bit here. I better do a big piece. So, and I did trial two different stencils, and these were just the best because the way they've cut them in the plastic is really clean. So when you're running your pen or your charcoal pencil or your chalk pencil through you're not disintegrating it on the sharp edge of the plastic so and you get two in the pack two different sizes which is really really good so I got that one that one's a classic this one here a diamond one and then that guy and this guy is the one that is on this panel there so I've now got it in two size versions to redo if I ever decide to redo it because it is a very very pretty pattern that one so yeah that's my shopping and as a thank you gift look I was given some fabric so let's open it up and have a little look how gorgeous yeah, see, I love the thickness and the openness of their weaves. They just, must be because it's a cold climate. So the fabrics just have a little bit more dense, but yet light. You know, it's, there's my little piece of fabric. How nice is that? Thank you, thank you. That will be very handy. And it's going to go straight into my little rice bag that is themed Japanese. Love it. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for watching. i got plenty of homework. And I will toddle off, get stitching. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye for now.